What's up there YouTube? My name is Alex, also known as Inch95, and I'm bringing you guys another episode, part three of Road of the King, my review of the Hoban book. I know I've been slacking on doing these a little bit more consistently, but I'm here to bring you guys the next section. I'm actually technically skipping a section, and I wanted to do this section first, which is part three, and it's kind of just about motivation and stuff, and a lot, a lot more about the psychological aspects, because as you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! has a ton of psychological you know, elements to it. It's kind of like sports or just anything in life. It's not just, you know... It's not just going through the motions. It's not just knowing the correct plays or building your deck or all these other things. There's also a psychological element to it in terms of how you think while you're playing the game and really just going in there and being prepared and being ready to improve. And one of the things that people have, and I'm kind of just going to briefly cover this section because I think there's a lot of ways that I'll talk about it and kind of throw in my little spin and kind of talk about some of the things that he talks about uh, in that particular section as well as you know some of the other sections about motivation. But Motivation is probably one of the most important things I would say across anything and just in life and and I think it's very important in Yu-Gi-Oh because I can't tell you how many times I have gone to a locals to a regionals to you know a YCS or to, to even the world championship qualifier and people have gone in there with a couple different things number one they go in there uh, you know setting a goal and this is something that Hoban talks about and I really kind of like this because a lot of people don't really understand the concept of setting goals versus standards or systems uh, for most people they say you know if you're trying and he gives I believe it's like a weight loss example like if someone who is let's say relatively obese or someone that's trying to lose weight right and they say oh you know in the next two months I want to lose like 10 or 20 pounds or whatever right well if they have that particular goal they don't actually establish right off the bat before saying that goal, you know, this is how I'm going to do it. Instead, they say, I want to do this without actually saying how they're going to do it. And placing that goal, having that real, that having that goal, that one thing that you want to do, that quote unquote desired result or goal means that you're placing a constraint on what you're trying to do, right? So you're basically limiting yourself. If some of you guys have ever studied like sociology, you guys will know the, 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 the idea of glass ceilings. And that's essentially what goals do. They put a cap on a person's capabilities. So if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player and you're going to, you know, your first regionals or your first, uh, your first YCS or whatever other event, right? And you say, you know, my goal for the day is to make, you know, top 32 or whatever, right? Or whatever top cut. Well, guess what? The reality is you're limiting yourself to what your capabilities are. You, you might get fortunate and you might get past that. But the reality is, psychologically, you're basically becoming content with only hitting that goal. And if you fall short, you're like, oh, well, I fell a little bit short before that, uh, you know, before my before reaching my goal. And that's a real problem. And that kind of goes into the defeatist mentality. And he doesn't really distinctly talk about this. And I feel it's really important to talk about the, de about the defeatist mentality because the defeatist mentality, it's essentially when a person goes into an event and they're not confident. They have zero confidence. They feel like because they haven't practiced or they just feel like because they lose a lot or they just aren't, they don't have the best cards or, you know, whatever other reason, right? They find some reason to go into an event and just be so negative and so pessimistic and really just not care if they lose. They're like, you know, they have that whatever mentality. They're like, oh, I'm probably going to lose. I'm just going to hang out the rest of the day. Like, you shouldn't be going into an event like that. You should be motivated. You should be excited. And you should be pushing yourself. And you should be setting a standard of excellence every time. You should make it habitual. I can't remember who it was. I believe it was like the, the, the famous philosopher Aristotle, Aristotle or Socrates or whoever. I can't remember which one of them said it. But they essentially said that... Excellence isn't something you just do once in a while. Excellence is something habitual. You always should strive to be excellent. So, and, and Hoban even talks about this throughout throughout the, the that particular section about motivation, where he gives an example with grade point average. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there are in probably junior high or high school, or maybe even college, or maybe you're in graduate school. You know, any anything along those lines. A lot of people have the issue of setting, you know, th saying this year, you know, I'm trying to, you know hit my goal of maybe maintaining a 3.0 average or a 3.5 average or something like that right well the reality is it's kind of like it's kind of like that phrase where people say you should aim for the you know aim for the stars and if you you know if you fall short you'll you'll probably still fall you know land on the moon right well that that's kind of what it is you shouldn't set your bar that low a lot of times people's goals are set to something realistic. You should never set your goals actually to something realistic. You should always set them above what you think you're capable of and set them higher and higher because the reality is you keep essentially inherently pushing yourself and even let's say, let's say you take someone that isn't the brightest student. Let's say you take a student that isn't that good at math but they're good in every other 
uh, you know, in every other subject in school, right? And because they're not that good at math, their grade point average suffers, right? Let's say hypothetically that one class brought their, their GPA down to a 3.5, and that's really their cap. That's really what that student is capable of. Well, if they keep trying to aim and maintain that 3.5, and instead of you know setting that goal of maybe getting that 4.0, the reality is they're probably either going to fall short, which happens quite frequently because you're really only aiming for something to a certain extent and you're not motivated to go further. You're not motivated to excel. You're not motivated to grow and adapt. You're likely going to hit that goal or you're going to fall flat on your face and you're going to fall short. Whereas if you aim higher, you have something to try and reach. You're having something that pushes you and compels you to put in that extra effort. And that goes back into that motivation. Um, setting a goal for yourself is not good. You should always set a standard of excellence. But even more so, what Hoban talks about, and this is kind of where he and I diverge in some of our views, but he talks about systems. And what he means by systems is that you should set not necessarily a goal like if we go back to that weight loss goal or that that goal of achieving achieving you know a certain grade point average in school you shouldn't set up a certain specific goal or desired result rather you should say hey i'm going to you know work out three times a week to try and lose more weight right and with by doing that you're essentially setting yourself you're, you're making it habitual a, a habitual system for yourself to try and meet a desired result and potentially even go beyond that result. You know, you might not lose 10 pounds, you might lose 20 or 30, right? You're not limiting yourself by what that goal says. Because if you say, oh, I'm gonna try and lose, you know, 10 pounds or 20 pounds within the next month, well, that even though that might not be realistic, you could fall short and you might not be able to lose more weight beyond that point, you know? So you don't wanna set yourself, you, you don't wanna have a cap on what you're doing. You, you should always be trying to progress yourself and set up a system for how you can achieve something more efficiently and more effectively, right? So if you're not doing well in school or in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, particularly in Yu-Gi-Oh, if you're, if you're struggling at winning at locals, for instance, you don't wanna say, oh, my goal is to win locals. Rather, you should say, you know, I'm gonna practice, you know, maybe four or five times a week for, you know, two hours a day or something like that on Dueling Network or with friends or what have you. That in turn is likely going to lead you to improvement and likely going to lead you to top your locals and then likely win your locals and maybe even go beyond that, right? So that's what you want to do. You don't want to limit yourself. And that's one of the big things. I know a lot of people in the past have heard me say one of my favorite, uh, my favorite quotes out there is limits like fears are often just an illusion. That's a famous Michael Jordan quote. And it's one of my favorite quotes of all time. And that's just because it really encompasses that idea of not having that glass ceiling. So you should always be focused on growing and adaptability. That's one thing. And that kind of goes with complacency. A lot of times people experience a little bit of success or not much of it, and they just become content. You should never be complacent with where you are. You should always be trying to go beyond that. You know, when, when you become complacent, you become stagnant and you, you stop growing and you fall behind. So for instance, if I'm an, uh, an individual, let's say we look at sports, for instance, let's say, you know, I'm not that athletically gifted, right? I'm not really the, the most physically gifted. I'm pretty skinny. That's just how I am. I try to, you know, I try to work out every night again. I play sports, right? But I have had plenty of friends that were athletically gifted but they didn't really put in that extra effort, right? They were complacent because they could beat me as a kid at basketball because they're a couple years older, they're a little bit bigger, they're a little bit taller, and they were just naturally gifted, right? Well, guess what? A lot of my friends now, because I kept putting in that effort, I was never complacent at sports, particularly basketball. Well, I put in that work and they didn't really put in that work, which meant I was growing and they became stagnant. And guess what? Now I'm better than them in a lot of ways in basketball. I may not have that height or physique or whatever, but I'm better. I'm, I have that higher basketball IQ. I, I can play better across the board and I'm just an all around better player in terms of them, right? So, and that's just one example. I know that doesn't have to do with Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's, it's a perfect example of people becoming complacent. Sports is a great illustration of that. And a lot of people overlook that. You should never become complacent with anything in life. You should always want more. You should always be pushing yourself for more and always be driven. That is one thing. So you don't want to have that defeatist mentality or that complacency. You should always be striving to grow. People people have this 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 attitude of like, oh, you know, it's okay if uh, it, it, I'm not saying failure is okay. It isn't okay, but they're okay with consistently failing or never seeking that improvement. And you shouldn't be like that. And really, th those are the things I really want to touch on. I know it's kind of broad. Motivation is something very simple, but a lot of people overlook it. And one of the things that I, I can't remember actually if he talked about in this section, I'm pretty sure he did. I kind of just skimmed this section real quick. But something that really, really stuck out to me in Hoban's book at, overall, like, like I said, I'm not certain if this was in this particular section, but it's this one little concept. And I, I kind of tied that to motivation 
because it's a little bit of a psycho a psychological aspect of motivation because you want to internally psychologically motivate yourself and be driven right well what are the things that hoban said and this really stuck with me and I actually tried it this past weekend at my regionals like given yeah i didn't practice and i wasn't prepared for the regionals but it was something that i kept trying mentally and i did a little bit better than i expected you know with no practice and i think that was one of the contributing reasons because i was pushing myself internally and the way i did that was Insta you know, if you go to an event, a lot of people ask you, what's your record or what's your record? What's so-and-so's record, right? A lot of people, if they're undefeated, they'll say, oh, I'm undefeated or I'm XO or let's say it's round nine and you've only lost one round or you've drawn one round. People will say I'm X1 or I'm X11 or X01 or what, you know, whatever, uh, uh, whatever other record, right? People have a tendency to say X dash something, right? X representing whatever, you know, however many wins you have. And then the following two numbers being losses and draws, right? And I thought this was something very, very interesting because what Hoban says is you should actually stray away from that. You should never say, oh, I'm X whatever, I'm X1, I'm X2. You know, you should never, ever say that. You should never say, oh, I'm undefeated. Don't ever say something like that. And I, and I, and this stuck with me and I never thought about it this way. And this is something that I really gained from this book and I really enjoyed that was instead, let's say it's round 10 and you're undefeated, or let's say it's round nine and you're going into round 10. Let's say you're undefeated round nine, right? You shouldn't say I'm, you know, XO going into round 10 or I'm undefeated going into round 10. You should say you're 9 0. And if you win round 10 day one of a YCS or a world championship qualifier, you should say I'm 10 0. Don't say you're 9 0 or XO or uh, don't say you're XO because that places kind of a barrier internally. And it's very, very subtle and a lot of people don't think about it. But the more and more I thought about it, it made sense, right? So let's say you're starting out your day at regionals, right? Or your locals, right? You go to your event and let's say you win the first round, right? You're one and oh, right? But instead your people, your friends ask you, you know, what, what, how'd your round one go? Or did you win that round? You say, yeah, I'm XO, right? You know, it's whatever you want. Another round doesn't matter, right? You go into the next round. You're let's say you win that round, right? You're still technically XO, but you don't say you're XO. You say you're two O, right? Well, when you keep saying you're X, whatever, you don't think about that subtle improvement in your record, right? You're you're saying it's XO, the X never changes, and whatever number after that can or sometimes doesn't change or probably will change because you're not essentially motivating yourself to do better the following rounds, right? By saying you're 1O and then saying you're 2O and then 3O or you know whatever moving on with the rounds, you're increasing that first number in your record, right? Inherently, what your brain is likely thinking is, "Oh, my record is increasing i'm improving i'm steadily gaining more and more wins and by doing that by saying you know you're 203040 all the way to the end of the tournament pretty soon you're gonna see your that first number is gonna increase a lot more and that's gonna show that improvement in your record which means you're winning more which means you're motivated which means you're on top of your game which means your results are showing you know, there's so many people and I know I'm guilty of this. Sometimes I'll say, you know, I'm XO at a regional or I'm X1 or X01 or whatever, right? You don't notice that. If you're in the middle of the day, you might forget what round it is, but don't try, don't do that. Try and not forget what round it is. Always try and be conscious of what round it is. It means you're in the moment, you're in the present, you're, you're contextually there. You're there. You're realizing that you're improving because if let's say it's round five, right? Let's say you've only lost one round and you can't lose another round at regionals. Otherwise you can't top eight, right? Well, if it's round five and it's a 10 round event, right? And you've won four rounds, you've lost one round, you can't lose anymore, right? As opposed to saying your X1 going into round, you know, six or whatever, right? You should say you're four one because that four is still there. Now your brain is thinking, hey, I'm trying to improve my record, which means I need to make that four a five. Got to make it a five one. After that, I got to make it a six one, seven one, eight one, nine one. And pretty soon your X1 and you're not, which means you're nine one. And that means, Hey, guess what? You probably top that regionals or whatever event, right? So you want to be aware of those little subtleties and nuances, although it may not seem that relevant, believe me. And I, I've, I've been really trying to do this. And if I continue to play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh in the near future, in the rest of this year, if at all, I'll definitely be incorporating this because I think it's something that a lot of people tend to overlook. And I really got to give it to give it to Hoban for that particular element, because if it's one thing that I really enjoyed, it's that it's those little subtle things that give you that psychological advantage, which lead to that motivation, that internal motivation. And I really, really like that. And I think you guys should definitely try it out. Stray away from saying you're XO, X1, X whatever. 
Try and be there. Say you're 1 0, 2 0, 3 0, and pretty soon your record is going to increase. That first number is going to go up. Your wins are going to go up. Your championships might go up, you know, et cetera. And I love that. So that's really all I want to talk about today. I skipped over a section which was about thinking models because I think it was a little bit overly complicated. I may go back to it within the next chapter or two. But I'm going to move on. The next section is actually about the circle and building people around you. And I really, really like that. Uh, that's something that I need to definitely take into account, especially if I'm trying to go, get back into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Please follow me on Twitter at Inch95. If you guys already don't, all my contact info is down below. You guys could be able to see all my information in the description or at the bottom of this video. I'll see you guys. That was Motivation Part 3, Road of the King, Hoban's book. Um, I know a lot of people probably bash Hoban and a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, it's it's just like any other book. I take, try to take the most positive things out of every book and, you know, learn little things, whether it be a simple quote or a simple model of thinking like this or thinking about goals versus systems. Never be, you know, a lot of times people say they're motivated, but they forget it over time. And that's something you don't want to do. You always want to refrain from being complacent. You want to adapt and grow. And that should be your goal you, your, or your, your desired result. The system that you set up should be a system that increases that adaptability, that growth all the time. And you should always make sure that you're straying away from saying your record is X, whatever. Always use a definitive number because that is the most accurate representation of where you are in the tournament. And it most accurate, accurately represents your mentality at that time. So I'll see you guys. Peace out. Take it easy for the rest of the week. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you guys want to check out the rest, I'll probably put the playlist for this episode. There's only been three episodes thus far. Uh, next week, obviously, I'll probably do an episode four. And tomorrow, I'll probably have a guest upload by uh, by an alternate YouTuber just doing something fun on my channel. So stay tuned to, for that. And I'll see you guys. Take it easy, guys. Oh, and remember, duelists, limits like fears are often just an illusion. Time Wizard is out. I'll see you tomorrow, guys.